Hey guys, it's Goofy Goop the Balls, and today I have you guys an insane 88 and 2 gameplay on the map Riot. I'm playing some ground war domination, and this is a solo gameplay. I didn't have a party of friends calling in UAVs or system hacks and things to help me. This is just me playing by myself, some ground war domination on the Xbox One. And the funny thing is, this really is one of my favorite maps. I'm not a fan of Riot. I mean, it's an alright map. I just, I can never seem to do well on it. But for some reason, I have this weird kill streak set up in this video, and it just happened to work, and I happened to get a bunch of kills. I go on a, I think, a 37 kill streak and a 50 kill streak, which is just awesome, ending up at 88 and 2. And this is definitely the best gameplay I have by far in this game. So I want to give you guys the class and some tips I use in this game so you guys can start doing better in your games and have better chances at going on these big kill streaks. So to start off, the class I'm using, I'm pretty sure it's an AK-12 with the grip suppressor and extended mags again no quick draw or stock like you see a lot of people do and those those attachments are helpful the quick draw you know aim down sight faster that can help you win a lot of gunfights and again the stock strafing left and right that can throw off an enemy's aim and those can help you a lot but like i said in that other video i think it was my 52 and 5 game plan on instinct but i said the same thing i just i couldn't use the quick draw or the stock attachments i mean they were good and they help but i just felt like i'd play a lot more sloppily and i just because I knew I had that advantage, I wouldn't take it as seriously, and I would just end up dying by, by making stupid mistakes because I thought I had an advantage when I really didn't. So I really don't like to use the quick draw and stock attachments when I'm trying to go on a really big streak. Now for the perks, I think I use the low profile, so I'm off the radar. Either cold-blooded or blind eye. I'm not sure which one in this video. Both are really helpful. If the enemy team is calling in kill streaks, then blind eye is really good. But cold-blooded also can be really good if they're not calling in streaks. So then enemies won't hear you on the callouts and they won't see the red name. So they might think twice before they shoot you, which could be the difference between surviving a little longer, getting a kill, or dying instantly. So I'm pretty sure I used cold-blooded, but either one of those perks is great for the second slot. And as for the third slot, a lot of people say you should run like scavenger and then, you know, blast suppressor or toughness after that. But what I've found is I have a lot better chance if I run Toughness and Blast Suppressor together and then I just take my chance with picking a gun up off the ground. Because a lot of people use good guns in this game like the IMR, the BAL, the AK. So it's pretty easy to find another gun on the ground. And that usually just works better for me. I mean it's nice to have Scavenger so you can just keep using your same guns, same attachments and everything. But I do find a lot of good guns on the ground. So I think it is worth sacrificing Scavenger to get both Blast Suppressor and Toughness, which are crucial perks in this game. And while Toughness isn't as strong as it has been in other games, it still makes a big difference. And you can see it in a bunch of the kills in the background where I'm getting shot at, and it makes a difference between me dying and me getting the kills. And then Blast Suppressor, as everyone knows, goes without saying, just stay off the radar when you use your exo movements. And that's really helpful when you're trying to exo boost and get around the map fast. Because if you give off that ping, people are going to know where you are, and that pretty much makes a difference between life and death. And that's the same reason you want to use low profile, so you can stay off of UAVs, because A, they're pretty easy to get in this game now, just 400 points. And being seen on the minimap, whether it be through the radar or through firing off your gun, is one of the easiest way to get killed, because people will know where you are and know exactly where to look for you. And even if you have the upper hand, because they know where you are, you're just probably not going to get the kill. So moving on to exo abilities and launchers, I don't use any of those. I mean, I find that the exo launchers are alright, like the Semtex and Stun Grenade can be useful, but they just take up a slot, an extra point that, you know, I could spend on a gun or on a kill streak or something, on an attachment, and while they can be helpful, I just don't think they're that useful because it takes too long to whip one out, shoot them, and then pull your gun back up. As for exo abilities, there are some good exo abilities, but again, I'd rather have that extra point so I can spend it on an attachment or gun or something like that. Now, the weirdest part of this class is the killstreaks. I'm running the UAV threat detection, so that's pretty standard, 700 points. And then I'm running the Vulcan here with extra time, so I get a longer burst and the extra burst. So I get two extra long bursts, and that helps me get a lot of kills in this game. But I just figured I'd give it a try, and for whatever reason, I just, I'm just i able to get double and triple kills with each burst pretty easily. And so I highly recommend that killstreak, actually. It definitely got me like 10, 12, maybe even 15 kills in this game. So I definitely am going to start using that more often. And then the Warbird Aggressor, that's pretty standard. I run that in all my classes. It's the Warbird AI controlled, and it goes around and shoots enemies for you, so you don't have to control it. So that's it for the class, guys. Maybe you guys memorized it or wrote it down or something so you can use it the next time you play. Whatever works for you guys. You know, maybe this class will actually help you guys get some more good games in there. All right, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was the kill streak. So now I told you guys my kill streaks. But one thing I wanted to point out was how close together they were. The UAV I have at a total of 700, the Vulcan in a total of 750, and the Warbird at 900. 
So that's pretty much a 200 point range there. And I think it's really important that you guys use killstreaks that are grouped close together like that. Because once you get the first one, it's very easy to stack them. And what I mean by that is you get the first one and it helps you get to the second one and the second one helps you get to the third one. And I think that's just the best way you want to run killstreaks because once you, again, like I said, once you get that first one at a lower point value, it pretty much always builds you up to the top one. So like here, I get my UAV and you always get UAV assist and UAVs also make it easier to get kills. So that almost always gets me to my Vulcan, no problem. And then like I said before, if I can get four or five Vulcan kills, that either gets me my Warbird or it gets me very, very close to it. So effectively, what I'm doing here is just by getting 700 points, I'm getting a UAV, a Vulcan, and a Warbird instead of having to go straight to the Warbird of the Vulcan at 750 or 900. So that's the beauty of having your kill streaks grouped close together. And so if you guys aren't able to get those really high kill streaks, you can try this, you know, put up a UAV and a system hack or something below this so that and you know run them with the assist points or something. So that's really easy. Once you get those, they build up on each other and it helps you get to that higher kill streak. Or if you guys know you don't want to go for those higher kill streaks or you're not going to get them, you can run lower kill streaks like, you know, run the UAV with assist points at 450 or something like that. So then you get that at 450, you can build up to something in the 500, 600 range, and then try to use that to build up to something in the 700 range. So even if you don't want to go for those big kill streaks, try to use those streaks close together so their point values are similar and it's really easy to build up from one to the other because that'll help you use your first streak to get to the second and third streak. Now, another benefit to doing this is once you get that last streak, it leaves you sort of extra room for your points to keep building up again so you can keep cycling your streaks. So because I have the UAV at 700 and the Warbird at 900, chances are that once I get that UAV and get up to the Vulcan and then get my Warbird, I'll still have some extra time remaining on the UAV and the Vulcan will probably build me up past that 900. So the beauty of that is just by getting my first streaks, I can get the Warbird and then get a couple extra points, like say 200 extra points after that, that'll already get me going to my towards my next streak. So like if I get my Warbird at 900, but then my streaks are still building up and my Warbird will keep building up too. So maybe I'll even get an extra 300 or 400. So just by getting my streaks the first time, I'm already halfway to my next UAV, which is really important if you're trying to go on a big streak because it makes it a lot easier. So you only have to get the first 700 points pretty much to get that UAV. Then that'll build you up to your Warbird and then back around again. So you pretty much have to get that 700 points, then use your streaks, and then you only need another 300 or 400 points to start the cycle again, and then another 300 or 400 to keep the cycle going. And it's just, that makes it a lot easier. It's a lot easier than getting 700 points and then getting all your streaks, then getting another 700 points. It's just one of the better strategies to help you keep getting points and score streaks, and thus keep getting kills and building up your kill streak, and even trying to go for that nuclear medal, or even that DNA bomb. Oh, and one more thing guys, if you do try using the toughness blast suppressor setup without scavenger, what I recommend you do is right after you get the first or second kill, you run up to that guy's body and pick up his weapon because it's not going to do you any harm. I mean, it doesn't slow you down or anything and if you don't have a secondary anyways, like I, I never run a secondary, I always just have my knife. So I just pick up that weapon and I keep it behind me. It doesn't slow me down or anything like that. But it just, it puts me in a good position because if I ever run out of ammo with my starting weapon and I don't have scavenger like I said, I can just automatically whip out to that weapon, just have the best chance of staying alive. And I end up doing it so much now that it's pretty much a bad habit. Every time I kill someone, I almost always run over their body and try to pick up their gun, which is not a good strategy because it's just, it, you end up rushing too much and that playing too aggressive and that's not good for going on big streaks. So just don't do it too much. And to sum up that part, just pretty much when you get a kill, the first kill or second kill, run up to that guy, pick up his weapon, and then pretty much after that, don't worry about picking up a weapon because you already have one, unless you run out of ammo with both weapons. And then if you happen to walk over a weapon that you see and you really like that kind of weapon, like you do well with the, like say the IMR or something, and you just happen to walk over one later on your streak, switch out that weapon for that weapon you picked up earlier. Because if your first weapon is out of ammo, you always want to be as prepared as possible with the weapon that you're going to do best with. Because that will help you get on the longer streaks. Not the silenced weapon, not the weapon that everyone says is good. The weapon that you do best with is the weapon you're going to go on the best streak with. So if you happen to see that on the ground, pick that up and throw it on your back. Because you never know when it could come in handy. So yeah guys. Hopefully some of this advice about kill streaks and putting them close together and trying to use a class without scavenger helps you guys go on those longer kill streaks and get some better games. And if some of the stuff I talked about in this video is stuff you guys haven't thought about or stuff you think is going to help you guys play this game, 
I'd really love it if you could either hit that like button or leave a comment on this video. And if you guys are new to my channel, it'd also mean a ton to me if you could hit that subscribe button for me. This has been Goofy Goop the Balls, and I'll catch you all in the next video.